All right, in our last tree diagram example, what we did was we looked at all these different things, multi-step events, where each of these outcomes doesn't have an effect on the next one. But I'm going to flip over the page and do exactly the same type of tree diagrams. But this time, what's going to happen is it's, each event will have an outcome and will affect the next choice. So in my uh, prize bucket at the moment, I've got a Kit Kat, I've got a Bounty, and I've got a Mars bar. That's what I've got. And you need to be able to choose two out of there to have a prize. And what's going to happen is each time you pull one of them out, it will have an effect on what you get the second time. So in my first event, because I'm letting you have the two choices, so the first choice and the second choice, if you pull out a Kit Kat, there is absolutely no way you can pull out another Kit Kat. So that means your only choices on that second one there are the Mars bar or the bounty. Right, our outcomes here are Kit Kat, then the Mars bar, or Kit Kat, and then the bounty. Now if I went again for the first time and said, or oh, it's this time in the first try I got the bounty, then my choices next time cannot include the bounty because it's already gone from the prize bucket. So we've got left here is Kit Kat or the Mars bar. So my outcomes would be bounty and Kit Kat and bounty and Mars bar. So our last possibility is if the first time you pull out that Mars bar, then my next choices would obviously be Kit Kat only and Bounty. So Mars bar then Kit Kat or Mars bar then Bounty. Oops, just one B, sorry. Now what we can do with these tree diagrams is say, okay, this, these outcomes, the second one, was affected by that first choice. So there's two different ways you can do tree diagrams. When we looked at this one, Whatever I chose for that first course, it actually had no effect on my second course. This one, however, whatever I did choose for the first time, it did have an effect on what was left over for the second time. So we can do lots of probability for this. For example, we might ask you, what is the probability of getting a Mars bar? Okay, and in this case, this one's got a Mars bar, this one didn't. This one didn't, this one did, did, and did. So we've got a possible one, two, three, four, five, six total outcomes. Total outcomes, there are six, and there are one, two, three, four places where we have actually pulled out a Mars bar. So number of events divided by total events means we had four times it was pulled out out of a total possible six which is 0 0.67, which is approximately 67%. So we can still ask lots of different probability questions relating to these ones. If we flip the page over and do something very similar, we found there were eight outcomes here, and eight combinations. You might say, uh, what is the probability of eating the fish? And we will go, right, well, none of these have fish in them, but one, two, three, four. So the total there is 4 out of 8, which is 0 0.5, which is 50%. You might also say, what is the probability of eating the fish and the beef? So we know none of these have fish in them, so they, were, they don't count. But here we've got a fish and a beef, a fish and a beef, but now we've got fish and pasta. So in this case, it is 2 out of 8, right? So you have to look at the total number of possibilities. All right, the total number of possibilities are here. And then look at all the things that are included in the combinations. Now sometimes the choices might be not affected by the step before, or like in our other example, sometimes the outcomes will be affected, okay?